Yeah, I had the honor of uh, presenting this data from the core CLL database uh, at the EHA meeting in Madrid. Uh, this study included 205 patients with CLL who initiated venetoclax after prior treatment with covalent PTKI. Uh, and some of these patients had also received chemotherapy or chemoimmunotherapy in the past. Uh, but all of them had been exposed to BTKI. The median age for this population was 69. About 60% of patients uh, received venetoclax monotherapy and 40% uh, had received venetoclax in combination with uh, with uh, another treatment. For example, could have been uh, you know rituximab or another monoclonal antibody. The median duration of venetoclax uh, therapy was uh, slightly over 14 months. And uh, most patients were able to maintain their dose of venetoclax and did not need any dose reductions. Um, there were some patients who needed it, uh, but that was the minority. The most common BTKI uh, used prior to venetoclax was ibrutinib, but uh, the study also included patients who had received a calibrutinib prior to receiving uh, venetoclax. The reasons for uh, the covalent BTKI discontinuation included intolerance to the BTK inhibitor or disease progression on the BTK inhibitor. And we noticed that about one third of patients had discontinued uh, the BTK inhibitor due to disease progression. So we then looked at outcomes for the overall sample as well as subgroups such as those who had stopped the covalent BTKI due to intolerance and those who had stopped due to uh, disease progression on the covalent BTKI. Additionally, we also looked at outcomes when venetoclax was started as second line therapy, so first line BTKI followed by venetoclax in second line, or when this was a third line therapy um, uh, with venetoclax or beyond. And finally, we also looked at outcomes of venetoclax plus rituximab. So uh, looking at the outcomes, the response rates were 80% for the overall population and slightly higher when venetoclax was used as second line therapy compared to later lines of therapy. And the response rate were higher for patients who started venetoclax after BTKI discontinuation due to intolerance compared to those who had stopped BTK inhibitor, BTKI inhibitor due to disease progression. And we can expect this as we know that patients who progress after BTKI inhibition uh, uh, have poor outcomes. But despite this, the uh, response rates with venetoclax in this group of patients who had progressed on BTKI, uh, BTK inhibitors uh, uh, was 70 26%. And uh, especially if it was used in the second line setting, the response rate even uh, went higher to 90%, although the number of patients in this group was quite small. We also looked at progression-free survival and time to next treatment in the overall population, as well as in the subgroups mentioned, uh, uh, mentioned uh, which I've mentioned. Uh, the um, progression-free survival and time to next treatment was about 40 months uh, for the overall population. And these were slightly lower in patients who had progressed after BTKI compared to those who had become intolerant to BTKI. We also saw good activity of venetoclax in patients who had prior chemotherapy and BTKI exposure. So to conclude, the study provided uh, compelling real-world evidence of the effectiveness of venetoclax-based treatments in second-line and or third-line setting for patients who have discontinued uh, covalent BTKI uh, due to intolerance or disease progression.